Hi, my name is Lukas von Stockhausen, and I'm Application Security Strategist and Product Manager here at Fortify. Today, I would like to talk to you about filtering issues and how can, you can use this feature in order to adjust the visibility of the issues you receive from static analysis according to your own policies. Filtering is a very powerful feature which we have available in Fortify in order to show the issues exactly in the way you would like to see them. You see here we have a view called filters, which is listing to you how all the different issues are distributed between the different buckets here. We can easily adjust these filters by, on the one side, doing a right click here on any categories or issues and create an additional filter or by manually adding filters to the, um, to the filter set. Filters can be stored in order to be reused and distributed. So you see here this drop down list of filter sets um, which can be added or which can be accessed. Also, filters can be exported and imported into Fortify Software Security Center so that um, from there they can be used in order to be associated to an application version so that we can actually have the same filtering available in Audit Workbench as well as in SCC. But without further ado, let's have um, a real look at this immediately. Right. You see here, I have ordered Workbench open, and um, what you can see as well, I've picked the filter set Quick View. Um, in this filter set, we see that we have 70 issues. Um, if we switch to Security Auditor View, you see that we suddenly have 335 issues. So this is a preset filter set for us where we only show those issues where we are highly confident that these are real issues and that they should be addressed by um, developers. But in this case, um, we want to create a new filter set. So this is always useful to start from that filter set um, on, a, on a basis where you see all issues. So we have here also our filter view. And what we can do in the first place, well, let's just imagine we are going back here to the low bucket and say that all the issues which are in poor error handling, we want to see in the critical bucket. So what we can do is we can actually create a filter. Category is poor error handling, empty catch block, and we set the folder to critical. Well, if we click here, click here on show all conditions, you see that we can actually use much more metadata being associated to this um, issue or to, to these issues or to this um, categories in order to um, base the filter decision on all this. In this case, we want to make it simple and say category is poor error handling, empty catch block. So we create the filter and we saw immediately moving these three issues over into the critical bucket. Well, but we said we are, do not only want to see the um, poor error handling empty catch block, but we want to move all issues over, right? So what we could do, obviously, is create for um, a filter for each of these issues. But it's much easier if we are going to edit this filter and say the category actually contains poor error handling. And if we save that one, we will see that all the rest of these issues um, will move over here to the critical bucket. So if we save that, you see we have 70 issues right now um, over here. And if we look into this one, we see all the poor error handling suddenly being critical. Um, if we go back here, we also have our own policy saying that the J2EE issues actually should not be worked at. Um, and in this case, we are going to create a new filter manually and say, and you see here all the metadata I can work on in order to create filters. Um, but in this case, we are going to take category again, contains, and we are going to type manually J2EE. And we hide these issues, right? So this makes them non-visible anymore. And these are around about 10 issues, I would say, if I um, roughly look at them. So we have 213 at the moment. Let's see if I create the filter. Um, we have 201 issues left. Um, so all these issues are hidden right now. Well, 
In order to be able to use that filter in other environments, we would need to um, to save that filter. The um, first mistake we did, and I wouldn't call it a real mistake, but the issue, this is a typical workflow. You start working on your filter and then you suddenly recognize, well, I want to save that filter actually, right? So um, what we are going to do here, we went to um, tools project configuration, um, and we say, um, okay, our own filter set, and we base it on the current filter we are working on, the security auditor view. Um, so we copy that over. And we can readjust all these filters right now. We're just going to delete the additional filters so that we keep a consistent security auditor view and um, have the standard setting here again. And if we move to our own filter set, right, we see what we added. And right now, we are um, recognizing as well that we, um, that we want to say, let's say, the system information leak. We want to move into our own bucket, right? We want to create an own bucket for system information leak. So let's create another filter here um, and say category contains. And we can pick this as well, right? We say here, contains system information leak. And then we create a new folder. We will make that folder blue, um, just to be different, and call it system information leak. Um, OK, and we see this folder being created. And we save the rule right now. And we have moved another 59 issues into system information leak. Um, and again, we can just drop through the different um, views here, and we see that um, all this is in the different views. Again, we are going to project configuration. What we are going to do right now is we make this a default filter set. The default filter set is mainly used in SSC in order to calculate all the um, trending parts on this filter set. And that is the first filter set which will be seen in, um, in SSC. And then we are going to um, export this filter set, right? And we are going to save that to the deck, um, to the um, desktop, and we will call it our own filter set. And save it. Okay. So from here, we say OK right now. And I'm going to close without saving this FPR. And that has some specific needs. Because if I would save this right now, all these filter sets would be stored in this FPR. But I want to show you later on um, that we can actually um, move this around and do not need to work on a saved filter set. Oh, sorry, on a saved FPR. So here we are under in 45 Software Security Center under administration issues. And what we are going to do right now, we are going to create a new issue template, our own filter set. This is our first own filter set. Browse, and we are going to desktop, and we are going to pick our XML file and upload it. And we see here, we have our own filter set here right now. So the next thing we are going to do is we are going to create an application, right? Um, we are going here into this SPLC application, and we are going to create a new version of that application and call it our own filter. Filter. OK. Um, going next here, we have to click the different values. Well, let's make that this project is actually in active development. It's internally developed. Um, it has um, internet, internal, no, not internal, um, external public network access. Um, it's an application. Um, it's platform neutral. It has a web access. Um, it's developed in Java and JSP, has basic authentication, um, the organizational attributes. It's actually a corporate application. Um, this is for retail. 
and this is in EMEA because I'm in Germany um, and we don't have any specific compliance data, but we have um, we have um, public data in there and it is for sales. Okay, so next one, um, you see here right now we have our own filter set, the one which we just created, right? Um, so we are going to pick this filter set here um, and if we click next, we give access to everybody to this application and perfect, here is our application. So let me show you um, if I'm going to reopen our FPR, right, that's the one we had before. Um, and you see here it's an SPLC AD and um, the FPR is called 19.2.FPR. Um, if we pick that one, you will see that all these filters we created earlier on are not in that anymore um, because I actually um, um, because I actually did not save the file right we are still here seeing quick view um, the security auditor view but we don't have our own filter set in here so if we are going to upload this artifact right now um, let's go to desktop SPLC um, and let's take that FPR again and open it um, right, we don't have that information about the filter in the FPR, but we have it in SSC associated to this application. So let's see if this is actually going to be vi visible. Um, and we see here the application is processing right now. Um, so let's um, wait a second until this is finished. But it uh, should. we already see here, you see, the filter set we are looking at at the moment is our very own filter set, right? And if, you, if we open that up here, we see all the three different filter sets. But this one was chosen up front. Um, so the um, processing seems to take a little bit longer. There it is completed right now. And if we go to audit, we exactly have all these different folders which we just created, right? We have our critical high, medium, low system information leak um, folders, exactly the way we saw that in the FPR. If we go back to security auditor view, um, you see that everything is moved back. So we have the exact same behavior as we have in, uh, we, we saw before in audit workbench. Right. Um, as I said, the filtering, so, sorry, the trending is done um, based on on the um, on the um, on the default filter set. And this is in this case, well, we can't see that really here, but in this case, it would be set up on our base on our own new filter set. Okay, and this is how we would do it in the FPR. Um, if we are going to download right now here, um, let's um, close this project quickly, right? Here we want to sign in into, into, into our SSC. Um, you will see that we will download um, actually SPLC, our own filter. That was our FPR file, right? This is going to be downloaded right now um, from SSC. And we see here again already, you see, we have our um, there was our own filter set. We have here our own filter set. So that is part of all that, right? Um, again, the other filters like in, in SSC are still available. If we would have deleted them, they would not be available anymore, right? Um, the other thing I want to show you how you can distribute easily, right? Let's, um, let's just open this um, base FPR again, right? Let's go here into desktop, SPLC. Um, SPLC 19.2 FPR. And we just open this um, this unchanged FPR again. And we see here, there is nothing in there. What I can do right now, I can go to tools, project configuration again, and import this filter set, right? If I go here to, de um, um, to um, import um, to my desktop, and I'm going to import this right now, and you see our own filter set is back in here. So that is another way of distributing this and storing it and bringing it to um, different areas.
Well, and with all that, um, I wish you um, a successful day. And um, if you have any questions into filter sets, do not hesitate to contact us here at 45. Thank you and goodbye.